I'm uh, going to be joined now for, by Andrew Clannell, who's coming to us from Canberra. Uh, we'll go through some of that detail and see what we think is a bit interesting. Andrew Clannell, thank you for your time. Great to have you on the show, as normal, always anyway, but uh, particularly on the back of that. Let's start first with the leadership positions. We know that the Prime Minister was endorsed, uh, as we'd expect, unopposed this morning. We know Richard Miles was also endorsed. He's from Labor's right faction. Confirmed just now... He will take the defence portfolio. Um, also, I think in a very big move, we know Penny Wong in Foreign Affairs will be the Senate leader for the government. But the deputy in the Senate was Christina Keneally. Now it will be the factional boss out of South Australia, Don Farrell. Now, what I think is intriguing here, not only is he now in a leadership position, He's also been given what in other governments were two separate ministerial jobs. He's got trade and tourism, and he's also got the special minister of state, which controls how elections are run and all the sort of internal uh, political machinations. In that leadership team there for the Labor Party, there is only one woman. And of course, this is the group that meets in the prime minister's office every day of a sitting week. Uh, what do you make of just that bracket of announcements? Well, I think that there are 10 women in this cabinet. And for example, in the, the Abbott cabinet, as you'd be familiar, Peter, there was one woman in the leadership group, one. but also just one woman in, in the cabinet. So uh, mm -hmm. you can see they're making a point there. But I, I take your point on only one woman. That's the departure of Christina Keneally that causes that. Don Farrell and Richard Miles get their pick of portfolios. And that's what occurred here. They know him as the godfather, Don Farrell. He sponsored Peter Malinowskis into politics. He's a South Australian colleague of Penny Wong, except that was always going to be a right-wing position with her being a left-winger. So, yes, I mean, I'm never comfortable with the fact that a caucus decides a ministry as opposed to a prime minister, but they, they take in, into account the sort of things a Liberal national team also takes into account, including representation from various states and men and women and the like. Some of the other positions I, I felt were interesting. Um, Katie Gallagher, sure, she's the finance minister. We would expect that. She was sworn in earlier, uh, just after the government was elected. But she's also taking on women. I think that's pretty contentious, given her role as one of the mean girls. Uh, there are plenty of other women. There are nine other women in the Cabinet. I'm surprised it wasn't considered more prudent to give another of those women uh, that role. Uh, a shift to for Tanya Plevisek. We know she loves education. She's been talking about education even after the election was concluded. Uh, she's been moved into environment and water. What do you read into that? Well, I think she's been demoted. And I think Anthony Albanese has long seen her as a leadership rival. And uh, she, she started the term with education, skills and training. And then she had education after she had skills and training ripped off her and given to Richard Miles. And now she's got environment and water. And he made a point then she's got to handle mm. the Murray-Darling Basin, one of the most contentious and difficult and <laughs> unsolvable issues in Australian politics. So I think there's no doubt. Uh, and what sort of a profile is she going to get in that role? So he says she's happy. I'm glad Michelle Grattan asked that question. That would have been the question I asked. Uh, and uh, it, it seems to me that, that she's been demoted. And you can see that some of... I mean, of course, this always happens, Peter, as you know, but... Some of Anthony Albanese's mm. closest allies have been rewarded. You know, Murray Watt is into Cabinet. Tony Burke has been given employment on top of IR. And, and it seems to me that he's demoted Plibersek. I always think that's a little bit unwise, that sort of tactic. Um, you know, the old saying, friends close, enemies closer. Well, maybe not closer, but uh, don't unnecessarily annoy them in politics, if you know what I mean. Mm. Interestingly, too, she's from New South Wales and uh, New South Wales, the basic community of New South Wales, those farming areas out in the West, uh, generally very difficult uh, every time the basin's brought up because they lose out uh, to the South Australian, uh, you know, bottom end of the Murray-Darling Basin. Uh, interestingly, I expected Michelle Rowland to take communications. She's been in a shadow in a very complex portfolio for some time. Uh, she's very well regarded. Murray, what you've talked about, a move into Cabinet. Um, that's also our reward, I think, for Queensland. But, but uh, Ed Husick, who uh, infamously made way for Christina Keneally in the past, he's elevated straight into Cabinet. 
Yeah, well, the New South Wales right backed Anthony Albanese uh, into the top job, and uh, I think that's been rewarded here. They've got a fair representation in Cabinet with Burke Bowen, um, Rowland, uh, Husey and Clare. I think the move of Clare to education mm. is rather interesting. I really didn't expect that one. Uh, Claire O'Neill to Home Affairs is kind of interesting as well. I know she wasn't that happy when she got aged care, uh, but, but he's, he's given her that very big responsibility. That's a big challenge for her. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that one goes. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting too. I mean, she has a big brain. Um, I've read some of her speeches. She gives a, quite a thoughtful, substantive policy speech and she's given some speeches about the philosophical direction of the Liberal Party, uh, Labor Party. So I think there's lots of gears uh, to Claire O'Neill. I'm probably giving her a death wish by even praising her coming from Peter Credlin. But, but what was interesting in this portfolio, she's never been in government before. She's coming straight in from opposition. Uh, if I talk about complexity, home affairs, which was a number of portfolio areas, departments joined together under Peter Dutton, I think that's a, that's a big brief to get across. And, of course, uh, as the Prime Minister said, they'll hit the ground running on Thursday. The National Security Committee of Cabinet will meet. Uh, the Expenditure Review Committee will meet. Uh, Jim Chalmers has already signalled he'll bring down a budget, an updated budget, in October. So... The ERC, the Budget Committee, I'm not surprised, are going to get to work straight away. Yeah, and, and, and so they should, and Parliament's not till late July. Well, I guess they have to have uh, some legislation. I also think it's interesting aged care has come into Cabinet with Mark Butler, and obviously that was Claire O'Neill's former portfolio. You've also got an aged care uh, minister out of the ministry, but you'll recall, Peter, that Richard Colbeck was making... Uh, such a mess of things that Greg Hunt ended up taking uh, on that role uh, in the Cabinet. So, uh, given all his aged care promises, uh, fitting, I guess, that uh, that position uh, does has, have a place uh, in Cabinet with, again, one of his uh, allies in Mark Butler. A couple of other things I, I want to mention. Um, Mark Dreyfus, the Attorney-General, will also be the Cabinet Secretary. Now, in the Howard era, the Cabinet Secretary was a senior political staffer. It's charged with, obviously, the Cabinet minutes being signed off and working the agenda through Cabinet. Um, it was moved under Malcolm Turnbull to be an MP and Scott Morrison, as did Tony Abbott, brought it back to being a senior political staff appointment. Here they've given back to the politicians. I thought that was interesting. Well, I think Bill Heffernan had it under Howard, didn't he? And I don't know how close Albanese is to Mark Dreyfus, I must confess. I wouldn't have thought they were that close. It is an interesting appointment. I'll be eager to watch Mark Dreyfus as Attorney-General. He's been one always writing to the AFP about various ministers mm. and cop some flack from that. Uh, I'm not convinced how he will go in the role. Just wanted to make a point about Home Affairs too, Peter. I revealed yesterday that Michael Pizzullo is going to stay in Home Affairs. The department head, Peter Dutton, respected him. Uh, so he's not going to defence, as has been speculated. So I can imagine some yes minister moments there, but I guess my point on that is they will re Claire O'Neill and Albanese will really be looking at, at him to keep the, the ship together, if you'll pardon the pun, to keep the boats out, and uh, he'll play a big role there in supporting a new minister. And NDIS too, we talk about leadership rivals. Bill Shorten's there, he's in the Cabinet, he keeps NDIS... Uh, Minister for Government Services, which is basically putting you in the cupboard. There's nothing there in terms of, uh, you know, sexy media content or, or stakeholder engagement. That's uh, that's the government talking to the government. Is that also a concern that that uh, like Plebisek that he's got two aspirants there, or or is Bill Shorten put away uh, uh, his uh, baton, as they say? I reckon Bill Shorten would expect what he got because that's what he had as a shadow. Uh, I'm not saying that he, he might not cause Anthony Albanese difficulties down the track, but as I'm sitting here as a political analyst, Peter, and, and the, the bell's going off in my head in terms of warning signs for Anthony Albanese, if, if I'm putting myself in a, a strategist's shoes, it's more around the Plibersek appointment. And, you know, Plib Tanya Plibersek's very popular. I, I think the Australian people would like to see her in a high-profile role. So you don't want to look petty in, in, in appearing to demote her. Uh, the other point I'm just going to make before we go into some other things, um, resources 
is, is on its lonesome uh, under Madeleine King with Northern Australia. Energy is with climate change. The point I made before about water being split away from agriculture, water's with the environment. Again, that's a signal from the left to their constituency. But climate change with energy is also a symbol to the constituency. Uh, precisely what Malcolm Turnbull did, if you remember, Josh Frydenberg uh, had that sort of portfolio at one stage and they ended up being so incompatible uh, that they had to go back to standalone portfolios, but they're, they're going to try that there with Chris Bowen. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Angus Taylor might have had both in the last Cabinet. And, and so I guess they're, they're keeping that moving. They shadowed him and they're adopting uh, the same kind of model. Uh, but, yeah, I've always found it interesting. It's, you know, it's, it's split from environment, et cetera. Um, and, it, well, that energy goes together with climate change. I guess you'd expect that from mm -hmm. the Labor government. Their, their signature policy, apart from putting the poles and wires up, it seems, is that climate target, 43% by 2030. Right, just before we go, just before we go, uh, we got to 76 today for Labor. That means majority government. Highly likely they'll actually get to 77. But still a lot of mm -hmm. talk, Andrew Clennell, about uh, an independent speaker. So my mail on this is if it is 76, uh, there will be an independent speaker, Peter. But I think he's going to get lucky yet again, Anthony Albanese and win Gilmore by, like, 100 votes or 200 votes, have 77, in which case the factional support mm -hmm. is apparently behind Milton Dick, the Queenslander, and he'll have his own speaker. But it really rested on that number, and he's had some good news on that front today. Uh, I think even Andrew Constance thinks it's hard to win Gilmore f f from here. I think it's arguable that Andrew Constance got himself a 5% swing in that seat because if you look at the rest of New South Wales and Australia... Uh, it certainly didn't go the mm -hmm. way that Constance brought it, but it looks like he's just fallen short. And despite the loss of Fowler, Albanese gets that clear majority and his own speaker, I think, Peter. All right. Lots to digest. I know you're going to run off and, and uh, pick up the phone and call a few people. Andrew Clinnell, I appreciate your time tonight. Right, the other thing, of course, with uh, this announcement, you just get a press release tonight. What I'm always interested in having a look at are the administrative orders that sit behind these names and portfolios, particular agencies and offices inside portfolios, where they end up, what's been kept, what's been scrapped. And, of course, very importantly, who are the chief bureaucrats? Who are the secretaries of the departments that Labor will choose to run them?